Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson in Mega Goal 6. But before we start it, let's take a quick recap for the previous lesson. On page 73, yesterday we've, ha we've focused on two skills, pronunciation and vocabulary building. Firstly, we explained the meaning of the word pronunciation or the concept pronunciation. We've said it's the way or the word pronunciation refers to the way we say or the way we utter a word. And in each pronunciation lesson, we learn a technique. In the previous lesson, we focused on learning how to emphasize on some of the word in each sentence and how emphasizing on one or another word changes the meaning of the sentence or changes the message that we aim to deliver to the receivers. For example, we have here four numbers and in each number there are two sentences. In each one of them, different words were emphasized. For example, let's go to number four. On number four A, we emphasized the word that. Is that a traditional gift in your country? What does that mean? That means we are asking about the thing. We are asking about that thing. Okay, is it a traditional gift or not? On B, is that a traditional gift in your country? Now, we emphasize the traditional to question the traditionality of that gift. So, the message that we, want, the, we wanted to deliver has changed. After that, we went to the vocabulary building part and on the left side, we have eight words and on the other side, we have eight definitions, explanations and synonyms. We listened to the essay. We've learned how to get and guess the meaning of each one of these words out of the context. Then after that, we went on and we matched the words with their suitable definitions or explanations. We talked about the first one. Evolve, we said it's the change of something over a period of time. The second word, exception, means, uh, or exception refers to anything that is different from the other parts. Number three, fictitious, any imaginary thing, humanitarian, something aims to develop the lives of people. Number five, limitations, the boundaries or the lack uh, sides or uh, let's say the disadvantages of something. Number six, neutral, not favoring any party over the other, being in the middle. Number seven, noble, reputable person. And the last one, trademarked, is when something belongs to a company or to anyone uh, exclusively. The answers of this example or this exercise is as shown here on this picture. After that, we have today's lesson. On page 74, we have a reading lesson, which is invented languages. Today, we have an essay about a story of someone who has invented a dictionary a dictionary about language he created himself. Today we will learn about the language that he has created and another language was created by the producers of Star Trek and we will ask some questions about the differences between the natural languages and the artificial languages. But firstly, let's ask ourselves some questions. In the before reading, we always talk about the, uh, the benefit of asking some questions before we read a book, before we read an essay, before re we read any text. We ask questions so we can find answers. We ask questions so we reflect upon what we are going to read in order to enhance our understanding and to understand in a deeper and more profound way <clears throat> and more profound way. We have two questions. The first one, what do you think an invented language, an invented language is? Would you hear this expression, invented language? What comes to your mind? We all know 
that the languages are natural entities. They emerge and they evolve throughout periods of time. They change. New words come, new words go. These are uh, the, the, the languages that we are familiar with. How about the invented language? What do you think is an invented language? Is? Another question is, do you think such a language could be successful? Now we are asking about your opinion. So there is no right or wrong answer. If you say yes, it's fine. If you say no, it's also fine because we are asking about your opinion about that thing. OK, now let's go ahead and read and say together about the invented languages. On the left side here, we have a picture for Zaminov. Zaminov is the person that the whole essay revolves around. He is the person who invented a language. Now we will go ahead to the first part. We will listen to each paragraph. We will talk about the new words. We will try to explain them. I want you now to pick up your pens, underline the new words, annotate if possible or if necessary. Then we will go ahead and listen to each part in this essay. Now we will start with the first one. Pages 74 and 75. 8. Reading. Invented languages. Every language has its flaws and limitations. Some people have been so frustrated with the imperfections of existing languages that they have actually tried to create better languages themselves. There have been more than 500 attempts at creating such languages. Each of these invented languages, complete with a vocabulary and grammar of its own, has had a specific goal. For example, some language inventors have wanted to invent a simple and easy-to-learn language. Some have wanted to create a gender-neutral language, and some have wanted to make language more mathematical or scientific. While none of these invented languages has ever become widely spoken, there are a couple that have been learned and spoken by a surprisingly large number of people. OK, now we've read the first paragraph. But now let's stop a little bit with some of the words. The first one in the first line is the word flaws. What is the meaning of flaws? It means the downside of anything, the downside, the mistakes, the disadvantages. He says here, every language has its flaws. That means every language is not perfect. It has its own flaws. And limitations, the word limitations is one of the words that we've discussed in the previous lesson and we have just reviewed together. Some people have been so frustrated. The word frustrated means depressed about something. When you are frustrated about something, that means you are depressed, anxious about something. Also, one of the words is imperfections. Some people have been so frustrated with the imperfections of existing languages that they have actually tried to create better languages themselves. What is the meaning of imperfections? If you focus on the word, you will notice that the first two letters are I, M. This is called prefix. And we've learned before that we can add to the word before the word or after the word. If it's before the word, it's called prefix. And the rule of prefix is usually give the opposite meaning of the word. For example, if we say perfect, that means, or the word perfect means something that is great. And imperfect, that means the word, that means it's something that has flaws and mistakes and so on. So when we add a prefix, when we add anything before the word that usually gives the opposite meaning. So the word imperfections here means that the language has its own flaws. And when we add something at the end of the word, it's called suffix. 
and suffix usually changes not the meaning, but it changes the part of a speech of the word. Now let's go to the second and the third paragraphs. The invented language that has the most speakers is Esperanto. This language was created in 1887 by Ludwig Zamenhof, a Russian doctor. Zamenhof lived in an area populated by four different ethnic groups that spoke many different languages. There were a great number of problems between these groups. Zamenhof felt that the language difference between the groups was the root of the problems. This gave him the idea of creating a language that would not belong to any one country or culture, but instead would belong equally to all people. The hope was that a neutral second language would break down language barriers and build a sense of equality and brotherhood between nations. The language which he created to fulfill this dream was called Esperanto, which means hope in the Esperanto language. Because Zamenhof's goal was clearly a humanitarian one, he was not interested in making any money from Esperanto. He published a guide to speaking Esperanto and gave up all rights of ownership to the guide. This way, the guide could be freely circulated to all people interested in learning the language. Okay, now, the first word or first expression that we want to focus on is breakdown. The hope was that a neutral second language would break down language barriers and build a sense of equality and brotherhood between nations. The word neutral is one of the words that we have dus discussed in the previous lesson. And after that, we have break down language barriers. What is the meaning of that? This way of using the language is called figurative way or metaphorical way. It's a way when we use the words or when we use expressions not to give, to give a literal meaning. So we are not breaking down. Breakdown means dismantle something, make it fall. So we are not making anything fall in the actual life, but it's metaphorical thing. It's something in our heads, in our minds, okay? So to break the language barriers. Barriers means the boundaries that ties the language. Now let's go to the fourth and fifth paragraphs. Language. Zamenhof wanted as many people as possible to learn Esperanto, so he made the language extremely simple, with no irregularities or exceptions to the basic rules. For example, in Esperanto, all nouns end with an O. All nouns can be made plural by simply adding a J. So the word for friend is amico, and the plural is amikoj. All adjectives end with an A. To create the opposite meaning, a speaker simply adds mal to the beginning of the word. So, for example, the word for big is granda, and the word for small is mal granda. The rules for verbs are equally simple, with no irregular verbs and no conjugation. For all Zamenhof's good intentions, Esperanto never became the unifying international language he had hoped it would become. People were not eager to spend time learning a new language, which so few other people spoke. However, Esperanto has survived to this day and is spoken by at least 100,000 people around the world. Okay, now, after we have listened to these two paragraphs, there are some words and some ideas that need some explanation or focusing on. We've learned that in the Esperanto language, if we want to turn a word from a singular to plural, we just add J at the end of the word. And if we want to give the opposite meaning, we add a prefix. We've all agreed that the word prefix means anything that we add before the word. So what is the prefix that we add to give the opposite meaning? 
it's small. We add the prefix small to the beginning of the word to give it the opposite meaning. After that, we have three words that we want to focus on. The first one is extremely simple. When we say extremely about anything, that means, or the word extremely means very. If, he's, if you say, for example, he is extremely happy, that means he is very happy. But the word extremely has an exaggeration tone. After that, we have the word unifying. Esperanto never became the unifying international language. What is the meaning of unifying? Unify means bring people together. If we talk or if we talk or if we are in a context about people and we say unify, that means we are we want to bring bring people together. For example, here, Esperanto never became the unifying international language. So it hasn't become the language that bring people together. So they speak the same language. After that, or the last word we have in, uh, on these two paragraphs is the word eager. People weren't eager to spend time learning a new language. What is the meaning of the word eager? If you eager to do something, that means you want to do that thing very bad. You desperately want to do that thing. Okay, so that means you are eager to do that thing. Now let's listen to these two paragraphs. The second most successful invented language is called Klingon. Other than the fact that it is also an invented language, it shares almost no similarities with Esperanto. Klingon, which was invented over 25 years ago, was not created with the noble intention of promoting the peaceful coexistence of people from different cultures. Instead, it is a trademarked invention of a major television studio. It was created in 1984 by a linguist named Mark Okrand for use in the Star Trek series. The characters who speak this language are the Klingon, a fictitious race of people from outer space. The Klingon Dictionary, which is copyrighted by the television studio, has sold more than 300,000 copies and has made quite a bit of money. Unlike Esperanto, Klingon is an extremely complicated language with complex grammar, making it an immensely difficult language to learn. As a result, it is estimated that only a few thousand people can speak Klingon with any fluency. Yet, interestingly, Okrand intentionally made Klingon difficult to learn. His goal for Klingon was almost the opposite of Zamenhof's goal. Okay, on this page we have only one word that we want to focus on, which is the word copyrighted. When we say copyright, we are talking about the intellectual property rights. So when we say about a product, when we say about a, a book or anything that is copyrighted to that person or to that uh, institution or to school or university or whatever, that means it belongs, the ownership, the ownership of that thing belongs to them. We can't use anything without their permission. The last part of the essay is on this page. We are going to listen. Uh, to the last two paragraphs together. His goal for Klingon was almost the opposite of Zamenhof's goal for Esperanto. Okran did not want many people to be able to speak Klingon fluently. On the contrary, Klingon was designed to be an exclusive language that could only be spoken by the most committed Star Trek fans. The vast majority of invented languages have disappeared almost as soon as they were created. While the most successful invented languages, like Esperanto and Klingon, have caught the imagination of a community of people, these languages are spoken more as a novelty than as a practical, everyday language. The fact that no invented language has ever become widely spoken seems to tell us something. 
It is only languages that evolve naturally and slowly over time that have the power to spread, to continue, and to become part of our identity. Okay, now after we have listened to the last two paragraphs, now we've listened to the point view of the author when he said that it is only languages that evolve naturally and slowly over time that have the power to spread, to continue, and to become part of our identity. Now let's go ahead and listen, or let's go ahead and move to the after reading part. In the after reading, we will answer these questions together. But as we have talked and explained before about the techniques that you can use to answer the questions or the post reading questions properly, they also called reading comprehension questions. How to, or what is the most appropriate way to answer these questions? Firstly, read the question, for example, number one, what are some reasons people have created invented languages? Read the question. After that, underline the keywords. For example, we have here reasons and created invented languages. After you identify the keywords, go back to the essay and start scanning. We've learned the techniques of reading. We said that we have skimming is when you go through the book or the essay quickly just to get an overview uh, or to get a main or to get the main idea of this reading material. This is called skimming. But in our case, in this case now, answering the questions, we are going to scan. So what is the scanning? Scanning is going back to the essay or to the book and try to find a specific information or specific word, date, or name, or anything. So we're going, or in this situation, you should go back to the essay, try to find the words that you have underlined, and then find the answer. You can pause the video right now, take some time, underline the keywords, then do the exercise by your own. After that, you can go back and resume the video. You can check your answers with us. Let, let's put in mind that the answers might vary a little bit, but we're going to suggest you some answers. Number one, what are some reasons people have created invented languages? Some inventors have wanted to invent a simple and easy to learn language. Some have wanted to create a gender neutral language and some have wanted to make a language more mathematical or scientific. So we, ha we have three reasons for creating languages or creating invented languages. After that, on number two, how did Werzaminov left inspire him to create Esperanto? Okay, now we are talking about a place where he lived and create Esperanto. These are the key words that will help you find the answer. How did the place inspire him to create Esperanto? Zamenhof lived close to four different ethnic groups that spoke four different languages and that didn't get along very well. He thought the language difference between the groups was the root of the problem and that they would get along better if they spoke the same language. Number three, if Bella means beautiful in Esperanto, what is the word for ugly? We've learned that there is a prefix that we can use to give the word the opposite meaning. So the word Bella means beautiful in Esperanto. What should we add before the word? What is the proper prefix that we can add to give the word the opposite meaning? It's Malbella. The prefix is mal. Number, number four, why didn't Esperanto become an international second language? 
People didn't want to spend much, too much time learning a new language that few people spoke. Number five, what is Klingon and why was it invented? Klingon is the language of the Klingons, a fictitious race of people from the outer space. It was invented just for Star Trek. Number six, how are Esperanto and Klingon alike and how are they different? Esperanto and Klingon are both invented languages. Klingon was invented exclusively for Star Trek and its circulation has made the studio a lot of money. Esperanto was developed for a humanitarian goal of bringing people together through a common language. This is the last part of our lesson today. Thank you all for attending and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Assalamu alaikum.